Welcome back, Ascenders, to the Ascended Thoughts Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Crane. So for this particular episode of this podcast, we are going to be talking about shadow work. Um, What is shadow work? What's the shadow, the benefits of it, the implications of it, and and why it is an important thing for ascenders to do while they are on their spiritual journey and kind of on that journey to ascension. Funny enough, I actually tried to record this episode already. I've actually fully recorded the episode along with three other episodes that I personally thought were amazing, incredibly in-depth, and um, there was no feedback over the microphones, no feedback in the, in the headphones, no issues whatsoever when recording all of those episodes. And when it got to the editing stage um, and just for the fine-tuning part of it, none of the audio was usable. There was a lot of clipping. There were some parts of the audio that were that were pitched up, some that were pitched down, and it was completely unusable. And I was really upset about it, but then I had to calm down and realize that, honestly, at that particular time, um, that probably was a message that wasn't supposed to leave and that wasn't supposed to go out for whatever reason. Maybe the collective wasn't ready for it, or maybe Spirit just had another idea for me. So today, I am trying again, and I hope that spirit will be (laughs) on our side this time. Um, My recording schedule has been thrown off a little bit, um, but that's okay. Um, Sometimes you just have to go where spirit is guiding you to go, and sometimes you just have to listen, and if it wasn't meant at that time, then it doesn't mean that it wouldn't be meant at other times. So I am rolling with the punches. We are rolling with the punches, and we are going to try again. So shadow work. So shadow work is doing work on the innermost part of yourself that you have once upon a time abandoned. Shadow is the parts of yourself yourself that you don't like. It's the part of ourselves that we consider dark, the part that we don't want to come to the surface, the part that we oftentimes spend a lot of energy trying to hide, trying to keep from people, and trying to keep from ourselves. It's the part of ourselves that we traditionally hate or are frustrated by or have a really strong dislike for. Your shadow self can include a lot of things. If it's anything that does not remain or sit in a state of energetic alignment, the most likely it is your shadow. And our shadow self starts building itself in childhood. It is all of our repressed emotions and feelings and thoughts. It is all of our our broken dreams that we carry with us, all of our our insecurities about ourselves, our self-loathing, our self-doubt, our self-hatred, all of that lives in your shadow. And the shadow begins to develop in childhood because childhood is when we all experience the first time an adult tells us to stop crying, why are you crying, be quiet, or don't talk right now, or... um, you know, uh, don't speak when adults are speaking. Um, it's the first time someone tells us that our dream is something that's too big that can't be realized. It's the first time that somebody invalidates ourselves. Those ex- experiences in life that start in childhood is the beginning stages of the production of your your shadow self. So think of yourself kind of as like maybe a yin yang sign. If you look at it, you have your white side or your light side, and then you have your your black side or your your dark side. Now, for that particular symbol, this is a demonstration of feminine and masculine energy, but go with me here. Picture it like that, but picture your light side being the positive side of you, the side that's in energetic alignment, the the part of you that you like, that you actually do enjoy showing to the world. And then the other side, that dark side, is the side that you'd work really, really hard in order to, to bury or to get rid of or to keep from showing its head. That is your shadow self. And 
the reason why it is so important to work with your shadow self is because if you don't, it does what I like to call grow heads. It becomes stronger over time and energetically stronger to sometimes you reach a point where you feel like you can't control it. So every time you continue to repress yourself, repress emotions, repress feelings, repress dreams, thoughts, ambitions, you are actively feeding that shadow self with more of that repressed energy. And like attracts like. If you are feeding it the energy that was used to create it, then it's only natural that the energy will grow bigger on its own. And then eventually you end up with people who trigger very easily. Maybe they get angry very easily and they do this thing that we call blackout or maybe they see red where they got so angry that they've lost all sense of who they were in that moment. They lost hold of their light side because the dark side or the shadow self took over. And when you are not in control of your shadow self, your shadow self will grow bigger than your light self. And it does have the ability to take over situations. And that's why so many people have a tendency to walk out of situations thinking to themselves, "Ah, you know, I really shouldn't have said that, or I really shouldn't have done that. Or maybe that was kind of mean. Why did I do that? It's because your shadow self took over. So what we want to do is to get you back into energetic alignment ascenders. And the way that we get you back into energetic alignment is to have you do that shadow work and that work on yourselves. Because when you start working with your shadow, the shadow will actually get smaller and it's no bigger. And then it it gets to a point where it's no longer bigger than your, 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 your light self, your white self. Carl Jung's definition of the shadow is actually that your shadow is your unconscious or disowned part of your personality. And it is the repressed or unaccepted part of yourself. So what do we want to get out of shadow work? What is the point? Like you go, okay, Mr. Green, I hear you. I understand, but I don't really understand the overall goal or how to actually do it. So the overall goal of shadow work is integration. You want to integrate that light and that dark to create a divine balanced harmony because the truth is you're not going to get rid of the dark and you're not supposed to because if you do then you're not in balance and balance and harmony is something that is a a a construct that's seen throughout the universe and all multiverses there's a saying that says successful equations Successful mathematic equations have a tendency to repeat themselves. That is what this is as well. You will see everywhere that you look, if you're metaphysically inclined, that the majority of sort of metaphysical or esoteric concepts have a light and a dark. And that is necessary. That is balance. Another problem when you don't have a hold on your shadow self is that because your shadow lives outside of your your consciousness, meaning it lives in your subconscious and in your unconscious, it has the ability to affect your behavior in ways that you can't consciously see at the time. It also has its own energetic imprint and as a result behaves like a magnet. And so Our energetic imprint of our shadow cells are at a lower frequency and vibration than the energetic imprint of our lighter cells, which is why integration is so important because you want it all to eventually get to a point where it's all one harmonious frequency. But the thing is, when it's at a lower frequency and it's strong because you haven't worked with it and you haven't gotten a hold of it, it starts to behave like a magnet. And so what you notice is that negative things start becoming attracted to you because it's attracted to your shadow self. It starts drawing it to you like a magnet because like energy attracts like energy. And so it's really important to get a hold of that shadow self so you are no longer a magnet for negative things or things that reside at a low frequency. So how do you spot your shadow self? You can spot your shadow self through examining your emotional triggers. So when you are in a situation and you feel like you have gone into that situation neutral or maybe happy, and all of a sudden in that situation, someone says or does something or something happens that you notice immediately invokes 
a lower vibrational or a more negative response in your being, that is an emotional trigger. And once you have the ability to identify that you have just been triggered, what you then need to do is ask yourself a series of questions. The first question needs to be, what happened? What just caused me to be triggered? And then the next question needs to be, well, why did I get triggered by that? And then the next question after that needs to be, what has happened in my life to cause me to get triggered by that? And when you start asking yourself those sequences of questions, you'll notice that you will start going backwards in time and you'll start identifying scenarios that have happened to you through the course of your life. And if you allow yourself to travel back in time, you will ultimately realize that most likely the the starting event for the development of that trigger was something that happened to you in childhood, something that I call childhood trauma. We are all the result of our childhood trauma. And when our childhood trauma is not healed, then it it grows into a shadow self. Another thing that you can do is simply have time of introspection. Sit with yourself when you're quiet, when there is no distractions, and when you're by yourself. And think to yourself, what parts of yourself do you have a tendency to dislike? What parts of yourself do you have a tendency to judge? Because judgment is a form of unacceptance. And what parts of yourself do you have a tendency to fear? Those things, ironically enough, for a lot of people, will be somewhat easy to identify. People can attest to, I find, how do I say this? I find that people have an easier time listing and identifying qualities about themselves that they don't particularly resonate with or that they don't particularly like faster than they can find things about themselves that they do actually enjoy. So this exercise is actually quite simple for a lot of people. You'll find that it's not as hard to get a long list of things going that you're not particularly fond of in yourself. But that's a good thing in this particularly in particular case because that means that you are quickly identifying your shadow self and your shadow your shadow being. And Part of the integration process is the ability to identify because once you identify, then that means you are on the journey to acceptance. You can accept something that you have not yet identified if you don't yet call out the fact that it exists and it resides in you and that perhaps maybe it is something that you want to transmute the energy in in order to make it higher. And so Once you get an idea of what those things are, then you'll be on a much better path to go forward. So um, there are also questions that you can ask yourself, things like, was I accepted as a child? And if you feel like you weren't accepted, what are some of the reasons that you feel like you were not accepted? And who in your childhood did you feel like did not accept you? Um... Did you feel like there were certain aspects of yourself that was accepted? So the first question is, were you accepted? So were you as a whole being accepted? And then are there aspects in you that were accepted? So maybe personality traits, um, maybe hobbies, maybe ways of thinking, uh, creativity, ways of expression, were those things accepted? And if they weren't, how do you feel um, rejected? What happened that you feel like caused you to feel like those things in you were not accepted and who did it, right? So who were the people that did not accept you? And then um, also examine whether or not you feel like you were judged by your parents or if you're still being judged by your parents or a caretaker or, or guardian and really judge or not judge, really Examine whether or not you feel like they were there and they supported you. And if you feel like there were many times where they were absent when you needed them because it was crucial for your growth, um, identify what those situations were because that is incredibly important because all of those situations is what created the shadow self in the first place. Your shadow self is essentially a a wounded child that was never heard or validated. And as you get older and you become an adult, whenever you are dealing with people or you are in situations that you, your, 
your subconscious or unconscious mind interprets as duplicating the situation that occurred in childhood. So duplicating a situation that did not validate you, that did not accept you, that judged you, then your shadow self gets triggered because it feels or it believes that is going into another situation that will continue to invalidate it. And so it gets triggered, it gets upset, and then it cries out. And so what you're experiencing in that moment is a temper tantrum thrown by your shadow self that that manifests itself in the form of anger or frustration or sadness or irritation or all those negative um, qualities or traits that we may perceive in ourselves. And so I like to say this with people. When children throw a tantrum, they're not throwing a tantrum because they feel like throwing a tantrum that day. They're throwing a tantrum because for whatever reason, they feel like they are not being heard or or accepted. And so they are throwing a tantrum to get that attention that they need. And so as an adult, when you throw a tantrum, an adult, tantrums may manifest itself a little differently. It may manifest itself in intense anger or sadness or, or grief or pain or aggravation or annoyance, but it's still a tantrum. What is happening to you is that your shadow self is crying out to be heard to be accepted, and then to be validated. When you validate the fact that a child is upset and that that is why they are throwing a tantrum, you will notice that a child will start to be calm. They will start to calm down and then that tantrum will start to cease. It's the same thing with your shadow self. Once you get to a point where you start to listen to those traits that you have that you you may not be particularly fond of and understand why it's throwing a tantrum and why it exists and why it's there. And then you get to the point where you accept it and then you validate it. That shadow self will stop throwing a tantrum. It will grow smaller and then all the extra heads that it grew over time will begin to disappear. And the more you start doing this work, the more that your shadow self will shrink or... The contrary, the more your light self will grow to match the energy of the shadow self, but on the other side, and you will be in divine balance. And that is where we are. That's where you want to be for sort of energetic harmony. So it's really important. So how do you get to a point where you start accepting your shadow self? Well, one, do not antagonize yourself. Do not antagonize yourself a sender. When you start to observe a pattern in you that you are not particularly fond of, just observe it. You don't have to judge it. You don't have to bully yourself because it's manifesting in that particular moment. All you have to do is observe it and then start asking yourself those prompting questions. Why is it here? Why does it want to be heard? And why does it need to be accepted? And then just observe the fact that it exists. Give it space. Give your shadow self space and room to say what it has to say so you can hear what it has to say. Because once you hear it, it no longer has to scream out for attention or for help anymore. Because now you are in the process of starting that validation. Get to the point where you learn to love it, where you learn to accept it, when you learn to honor it, and when you learn to validate it. When you can love, when you can accept, when you can honor, and when you can validate is when that shadow self will fall in line. Because again, it's just a child throwing a tantrum. All it ever wanted from the beginning was love. All it ever wanted from the beginning was acceptance. It just wanted a little bit of honor. It just wanted to be validated, but nobody validated you over time. And so as a result of that, you have copied their patterns of behavior and you have learned for some reason to not validate yourself. And so validate the fact that you feel what you feel. The point about shadow work is not about being mad that you get angry sometimes. It's about validating that you are goddamn mad. It's about validating that you feel what you feel and that you deserve to feel what you feel because they are your feelings. Claim it. 
Part of the issue with things like anger and frustration and irritation and annoyance is that when you try, when you antagonize yourself and you bully yourself while it's happening and you've got that brain fighting with each other, that angry brain, but then also that brain saying, no, you should not be angry. No, you should not be angry. What happens is the angry brain becomes more angry versus if you just observe the fact that it's angry and accept it because it's okay. The angry brain doesn't have more things to be angry about. So it can get angry quickly and then calm down faster. And that is what you want to get. Shadow self is about the acceptance of who you are. It's about accepting all those repressed emotions and all those forgotten about emotions that you have been doing or repressing for for your for the entirety of your life. It's about now recognizing those things, accepting those things, and loving yourself regardless of those things regardless of the fact that those things exist. Observe what's happening while it's happening without the judgment so you can let it go. I like to say let it flow to let it go. Energy is always in movement. It has to be. You cannot stop the movement of energy. When you try to stop the movement of energy, you create blockages that make it harder for you, energetic blockages. What you want to do is to remain in the flow of everything. When you remain in the flow, you start to... to to align with your higher purpose and with your soul's purpose. And you will notice that things in life will begin to come to you and start manifesting with you. When you are blocking things, and that is what happens when you allow your shadow self to be in control, then those things don't flow because you are blocking the energetic flow. So you must let it flow in order to let it go. So when you observe the fact that you're feeling one of these shadow aspects in yourself, just observe it. Visualize yourself taking a step backwards out of your body, your higher self, your soul, taking a step out of your physical human body and observing the physical human body and what's happening in it. That's it. Observe it without emotion. That is energetic flow. Because when the energy has a place that it can flow without being stopped, guess what? It keeps moving until it flows out. If you stop that energy, it's stuck and it's stuck inside of you because it has nowhere to go. So let it flow in order to let it go and really take the time to sit down and do your childhood review, which is what I was talking about before in terms of asking yourself, were you accepted as a child? Were there aspects of you that were accepted as a child? If not, what were they? Who do you feel did not accept you? Do you feel like you were being judged by your parents? Where did you need more support and they did not give it to you? All of those things will help you to revisit your lifetime. And when you're revisiting situations that have happened to you and and occurrences, then you can accept it. Because the thing is, we have gotten very good ascenders of going through life and sweeping everything under the carpet. And when you leave it under your carpet, how could you possibly accept it when you don't even remember what you swept under there? And then when you get there, what'll happen is that you will notice that you have formed a friendship a balance, a partnership with your shadow self. And at that point, Ascenders, you are completely unstoppable. Nobody can touch you when you have gotten to a place where you have formed best friends with your shadow self. Because that means that you have effectively formed best friends with the aspects and the parts of yourself that you used to hate. This means that people can no longer throw it in your face. Mm, think about that, Ascenders. When you have formed best friends with the parts of yourself that you used to hate, people can no longer throw it in your face. And that makes you unstoppable. So your homework for this week, Ascenders, is to sit down with yourself and really examine where those emotional triggers come from and the start of your shadow self revisit all of those situations and those scenarios that have caused you to feel repressed or unheard or invalidated because identifying what those things are will get you to a place where you can address it but you have to know what you're addressing first and once you get there practice the art of observing without judgment and then loving accepting honoring and most importantly validating yourself This 
will propel you on your journey to ascension. Stay inspired and keep ascending.